This is part of a series of supplemental self-guided presentations that you can view at your leisure to get more information about topics of interest to you. My name is Josh Dadolf. I'm a clinical social worker and caregiver support coordinator at the Durham VA Medical Center. And in this presentation, I'm going to talk about steps you can take towards planning for the future. As a caregiver, it's hard to think about all of the what-ifs and inevitabilities of aging. Through today's presentation, I hope we can provide you with some tools and resources that will help with the challenges that often accompany the process of planning for the future. We'll talk about some strategies for having difficult conversations with your veteran loved ones. We'll learn a little bit more about advanced directives. We'll discuss durable power of attorney and learn about the guardianship process. Finally, we will identify some resources that may help you and your family with planning for the future. Planning for the future involves having a conversation with your veteran loved one. Many people find this conversation difficult to start. Some people feel as if the topic is morbid or gloomy. Others feel as if bringing up the topic will be upsetting to the veteran or to the family. Regardless, it is important to have this conversation. Together, we'll talk about a few strategies to make having the conversation easier and as productive as possible. Starting the conversation. There are a lot of unknowns when it comes to starting the conversation with your veteran loved one. So first, let's start with a few questions you may have. Why is this important? It is important to have this conversation for many reasons. It gives the veteran an opportunity to voice his or her preferences for care should he or she become incapacitated and unable to voice their own care needs or wishes. It will provide you, as a caregiver, important information regarding your veteran loved one's wishes. And it is important information that can be shared with family, such as adult children or siblings or others, about the veteran's wishes and desires regarding their care. Perhaps most important of all, it takes the burden of guessing off of you or other family members to try and figure out what your veteran loved one would have wanted during a time of crisis should he or she be unable to speak their own wishes. When should I have this conversation? The short answer is, as soon as possible. It is tempting to procrastinate when it comes to future planning. It can feel like an unpleasant chore. However, the sooner you have the conversation, the greater the chance you will be prepared in the event that a health event renders the veteran unable to speak on his or her own behalf. Where should I have this conversation? It is best to have this conversation in a comfortable and quiet place, perhaps at home, at the kitchen table, or maybe in the living room. Try and make it a private place where you can talk confidentially. Try and keep the environment distraction-free, meaning no TV or radio playing in the background. How should I have this conversation? We recommend that the conversation come from a place of care and concern. Sometimes it is helpful to acknowledge that it's hard to think or talk about the what-ifs in life. It may be helpful to start the conversation with a plan. Mention to your veteran loved one that you want to have a conversation about the future and would like to set aside some quiet time later today or later in the week to have a conversation. Then make a date and stick to it. Advanced Directives An advanced directive, also known as a living will, is a legal document that will act as the voice of your veteran loved one to help their treatment team and family members know their wishes about medical and mental health care should they become unable to speak for themselves. It can help clinicians and family members make decisions about treatment and care based on the voiced wishes and wants of the veteran should he or she be unable to express them themselves. It also protects their right to make their own medical decisions and ensures that their future medical care reflects their wants and wishes. Durable Power of Attorney For health care, it allows the veteran to identify a health care agent, a person who will make health care decisions for them if they are unable to make decisions for themselves. For finances, it allows the veteran to identify a person who would manage their finances if they were to become unable to make financial decisions for themselves. Preparing an advanced directive or durable power of attorney gives your veteran loved one a voice in the event that he or she can no longer speak on their own behalf. Whether this voice is needed to guide healthcare decisions with a clinical team 
or to reassure family members of what your veteran loved one would have wanted, this is an important conversation to have and an important document to prepare. Your caregiver support coordinator, your veteran's packed team social worker, or virtually any social work staff at the VA can help you and your veteran complete an advanced directive durable power of attorney. There's also a helpful guide on advanced care planning at www.va.gov forward slash geriatrics. The Veteran Shared Decision Making Worksheet is a great resource to help guide you through what can be a difficult conversation about the what ifs in life. It can also help your veteran loved one have a clear conversation with his or her health care team about what future services and supports may be best. As you can see here, the form guides you through identifying current needs as well as prompting a conversation concerning what to consider if circumstances should change unexpectedly. It will also help you discuss options available as well as identifying what is important to the veteran and what he or she values in terms of planning for the future. It will guide you through the conversation about who is or should be involved in your long-term care planning, what options should be considered, and then what steps are needed to put a plan into action. Again, you can download this form at www.va.gov forward slash geriatrics. A Do Not Resuscitate Order or DNR, is a separate document from the durable power of attorney or living will. Although your veteran can express his or her wishes to not have life-sustaining or heroic treatments administered, a DNR is an extra level of support in a time of emergency. This process varies from state to state. In North Carolina, for example, if paramedics are called to your veteran's home and he or she has stopped breathing or their heart has stopped, they must, by law, perform CPR. For veterans who are facing end-of-life care and have expressed that they do not wish to be resuscitated should their heart stop, a DNR posted in the home will enable the paramedics to ensure the veteran's wishes are honored. You do not need a lawyer to complete this form, as long as the veteran is capable of making decisions for his or herself, as in he or she has not been appointed a guardian of person. A DNR can be completed by your veteran's primary care provider and a VA social worker can assist you with the process. Guardianship A legal guardian is appointed by a court when a person has been determined to be incompetent due to physical or mental incapacity to maintain the care of a person and or the property of that person. A legal guardian of person is an individual appointed by the courts to make decisions regarding the personal welfare of the person. This includes making decisions regarding health care, requesting medical records, and authorizing release of said records to third parties. A legal guardian of property is an individual appointed by the courts to make decisions on behalf of a person regarding property-related matters. This includes handling funds, real property, and financial transactions. This person does not have authority over medical decisions. A legal guardian of person and property is an individual appointed by the courts to make all decisions regarding the person and the property of that person. Preparing for guardianship is a more complicated process and involves a legal proceeding where your veteran loved one will have to be determined to be incompetent, as in unable to safely or properly manage his or her own legal, financial, or health care matters. This is a very challenging process and can vary from state to state. Typically, the steps are as follows. The court jurisdiction will have a hearing to determine if your veteran loved one is incompetent by legal purposes to manage their own legal, financial, or health concerns. Your veteran will receive a notice of hearing on the guardianship petition. Your veteran will have the right to be represented by an attorney if he or she chooses. As well, your veteran has the right to be present at this hearing. In some cases, to ensure that your veteran loved one is protected and his or her best interests are being considered, the courts may appoint an objective third party called a guardian ad litem to review your veteran's case, his or her medical records, talk with any possible witnesses, and then issue a report with their findings to the court to support or refute the request for guardianship. Then, if determined appropriate, they will appoint a guardian. You can request that the courts appoint you or a trusted family designee 
or have one appointed by the courts. The veteran will have the right to appeal this decision as well. Again, this is a very complicated process that involves the removal of your veteran loved one's rights and should be used only in situations where less restrictive options are no longer safe or effective. During a crisis situation is not the best time to be trying to find important paperwork. Emotions are at a high level, and there may be a time barrier or limit. There are a number of important legal documents that you should keep handy. Some of those documents to be kept in a safe place include copy of a veteran's medical records, their form DD-214, a medical evaluation board or physical evaluation board, or integrated disability evaluation system rating, the veteran's VA disability rating, and a disability award letter, a social security disability award letter, a declaration of a VA fiduciary, or a declaration of a social security representative payee as well any combat-related special compensation award letters. In addition, mortgage and property deeds or rental agreements like a lease, insurance policy papers for your home, your auto, your health, your life insurance, vehicle titles and loan agreements, birth certificates, marriage certificates or divorce decrees, custodial arrangements, diplomas, and any other documents that you think are important and should be kept handy. Again, during a time of crisis is not the best time to prepare. Consider preparing these documents now to ensure that you have them on hand should you need them. Important legal documents to consider preparing? Adorable power of attorney or living will and advance directive. A do not resuscitate order or a guardianship petition if those are applicable in your situation. And a will or trust. There is no time like the present to get prepared. Health and circumstances can change in an instant. Having a plan in place for the unexpected what-ifs in life, though not a guarantee, greatly increases the likelihood of effectively managing a stressful and emotional time. Here are some useful online resources that you may find helpful when it comes to planning for the future. The VA Caregiver website has a wealth of information for you specific to your role as a caregiver. You'll find plenty of information about planning for the future, as well as other topics. The VA.gov Geriatrics website is equally helpful. You'll find resources and links that can answer almost any question you have about caring for your veteran loved one. The Rural Health website has a link under the resources section mid right side of the face page and there are a series of videos available to view regarding caring for a veteran loved one with dementia. These videos are helpful for a variety of different veteran situations. The last four links are to specific documents that can be helpful for you in completing a VA Advanced Directive, Durable Power of Attorney for Healthcare. Finally, your Caregiver Support Coordinator, your Veterans Packed Team Social Worker, or Social Work Department at the VA can help guide you in the process of planning for the future, including assisting you with finding legal resources and support to help you and your veteran loved one with the process of guardianship if you determine that this is what's necessary. Thank you for taking the time to view this presentation. If you have any questions or are in need of some resources, please reach out to your local caregiver support coordinator or call the VA National Caregiver Support Line at 1-855-260-3274. Be kind to you and take good care.